Well, good morning. Welcome to worship at Crestview Austin Baptist Church. My name is Jeff Kramer, and I'm the pastor here at Crestview Austin. And we're so glad that you joined us today. I encourage you to look at our other videos on our YouTube channel, Crestview Austin Baptist Church, and watch as our music worship leader, Stephen Mansolo, leads us in worship uh, during uh, these times of where we are uh, having to meet uh, virtually, but we're very thankful for his gifts and talents, using them for, uh, for God, and hope that you uh, join him as he sings along. Well, today we're going to continue our series on World War C, or World War Corona, and we are looking at timeless truths that are found in God's Word uh, that will help us during this physical, uh, cultural, ideological, and spiritual war that is currently going on, that we are in the middle of, that we are each individually facing. Not only are we fighting for physical life against death and disease in this COVID-19 uh, virus, but we're also fighting a cultural, ideological war against those who would destroy uh, Judeo-Christian beliefs and value system. It's a worldview warfare. Also, more, uh, most importantly, we're fighting a spiritual warfare uh, against the evil one who would ruin and destroy everything good and holy and would wish to rule the world. And it is basically God versus the devil. Well, today we're going to finish up talking about worldview. What difference does it make? Uh, we've talked about what a worldview is and quickly went over some of the component parts. And uh, last time we started looking at well, what difference does it make? Do I really need to know what my worldview is? Do I really have one? Do I really care? And uh, so I invite you to look again where uh, there's another definition which I'd like to share with you, a very basic definition of what a worldview is and why it's so important. A worldview is the philosophical or theological spectacles through which we view the world and its reality. Again, we all have a set of glasses through which we, we look at the world and understand the world. And, and so each individual uh, interprets the world because of in the way in which they think. Uh, it goes on to say the framework within which we interpret the data of the world and life. A Christian worldview uses the biblical revelation as the foundation for a proper understanding of the nature and purpose of our existence. That revelation establishes divine truth about God, man, sin, salvation, purpose, and our ultimate destiny. Thus, both our belief and our behavior are governed not by changeable theories, but by God's immutable truth. And that's from Alan Cairns from the Dictionary of Theolo uh, Theological Truths. And I really like that uh, as far as helping us to understand what a worldview is. So what does it matter? Why do I, why do you need to watch and protect your worldview that it does not become tainted by other worldviews that are uh, that do not believe in God and uh, do not believe in the supernatural and the answer is very simple if a person or a group or a movement of people can change and control your worldview then they can change your life they can change the tra trajectory of your life as they change the way you view the world the way you think about the world because that will change how you act in the world now this is a key point the, this question about why does worldview matter ties into the connection of the spiritual warfare that's going on behind the scenes of World War C or World War Corona. There's a spiritual warfare that's going on behind the scenes. So it really does matter as far as that, yes, our worldview does matter and why we must protect it. For you see, if Satan can control your mind, your thinking, your worldview, 
then he has control of you. Now your mind is the battlefield for all that you think and do. Now last week we began looking at this behind the scenes battle for your worldview. There's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and many times in the unseen realm, a lot of things that goes on in the realm in which we exist, but yet there's other things that go on in the spiritual realm or reality that affects our uh, seen reality. Uh, last time we looked specifically uh, that how Satan wants to blind your eyes to the truth. And we looked at three scriptures. Uh, we'll just briefly review them. We looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, where it talks about, it says, in whose case the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelieving, so that they might not see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. So Satan... Uh, who is the God of this world, is what Paul's referring to. He's blinded. In other words, he, he wants people, the, the idea of that word goes with it, that he tries to help people uh, remain in the dark about Christianity. He wants them not to be able to st understand God's love and God's grace and what Jesus did on the cross when he died and when he rose from the grave and he gave us his Holy Spirit. Satan does not want us. He wants to blind individuals' eyes. He wants to blind our, our minds to this truth. And then those who do understand it, he wants to remove it. He wants to remove that understanding. If somebody has a grasp on it, he wants to confuse them with all these other things. So basically, they're ineffective. Uh, the other uh, verse that we looked at, another one of the verses, is 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3, where Paul writes, But I'm afraid that as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, your minds will be led astray from the simplicity and purity of devotion to Christ. So again, uh, the Satan deceived, uh, Paul's uh, referring to, uh, to Satan, how Satan deceived Eve, and tried to lead, uh, he tried to lead her mind astray about questioning whether, you know, God truly say that? And then he just out uh, and out uh, in front just basically denied what God said was true. Oh no, God didn't say that. And no, God doesn't want you to eat this apple. Eat this. Well, eat the fruit. Doesn't say apple because he wants uh, he wants you not to be like he is. He just flat out lies about God. And so that's exactly what Satan will do with us. He'll cause us to. He wants us to doubt God's word. He wants us to not only doubt it but to say, "Oh, that can't be true. God didn't say that." So uh, the last verse we looked at was Matthew chapter sixteen, verse twenty-three, and talking about Jesus uh, right after. Uh, Peter had said that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God, and, and then, uh, then uh, G Jesus says, yes, uh, uh, Peter, uh, flesh and blood didn't reveal that to you, but God did, and blessed are you, and I'm calling you the rock, and then, uh, then Jesus starts talking about going to the cross, how he must be crucified, and three days be raised again, and then Peter goes, oh! Oh, no, God, uh, that'll never happen. You don't need to go to the cross. May that never be. And then Jesus basically, I mean, he says to Peter, calls him Satan. He says, get behind me, Satan, because the words that were coming out of his mouth were right straight from Satan. He says, you're a stumbling block for me, for you are not setting your mind on God's interests, but man's interests. Uh, so uh, Jesus tells Peter, uh, he says, back off, Peter. These words you're saying are satanic. He's saying they're from the pit of hell. Uh, get away, be gone, depart from me. You're a stumbling block. He's, you know, he's tempting Jesus. Jesus knew that he had to go to the cross in order that he might take our sins upon himself, that, that, uh, that they might be paid for, and then that he might be raised from the dead to conquer death. So uh, these are things, again, anything that tries to get us away from what God's purposes are. Uh, again, Satan wants to blind our minds to it. Now, as we move on today, we're going to look at a lot of scriptures, specifically looking at to see how there are consequences to rejecting God's word and his worldview. That's one of the big things today. People try to blame others. They don't take responsibility for their choices. They think they can get around 
the responsibility and there will be no consequences to their choices. Well, today we're specifically going to look about how the Bible tells us there are consequences to the thoughts we think and how our mind operates and what are the framework and there's a consequence to the framework in which we choose, the glasses in which we choose to interpret reality. So we're going to look at a lot of scriptures, and uh, I'm not going to put all the scriptures up on the, the slide uh, on the slideshow. But uh, I encourage you to get your Bible out, maybe pause, uh, pause the video, and and uh, go get your Bible, or go ahead and read it, and then come back and and uh, pause it uh, and look up the scripture as you go. So uh, they're not all going to be up there because we're going to look at so many, but I'm going to try to read as many as possible in the time that we have. So uh, again, this is all talking about the consequences. Why does worldview matter? It matters because there are consequences to the worldview that you choose to operate within. So first, uh, the major points here that we need to understand about consequences is, first of all, is that a mind that rejects God's, uh, the, the mind that rejects God faces destruction. Those who reject God's worldview, those who reject God's existence and his love and all that he's done, they will face destruction and punishment. Paul writes in Philippians chapter 3, verses uh, 18 and 19, he says, For many walk, of whom I often told you, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their appetite, and whose glory is their shame, who set their minds on earthly things. They set their minds on earthly things. Now, Paul tells us that a mind that is set on earthly things is, is a mind that is an enemy of the cross. The indestruction is that they live according to their own lusts. They do what they desire and, and don't care what others wish. So the phrase, they're enemies of the cross, uh, basically means there are those who hate the cross of Christ, those who are hostile towards the cross of Christ. There are those who don't want to hear about God. It, it just burns their ears. It makes them sick because anytime we mention Jesus and the cross, it means there's an accountability for their sin and their actions and their thoughts. So rather than humbling and submitting and agreeing that their ways are, are grievous to God, that they've sinned, they've fallen short or going the wrong way, they get mad, they get angry, uh, they get hostile. Uh, in fact, they've done this, they did it to Jesus because Jesus said, no, relationship with God is a personal relationship. It's about your heart. It's not about what you do. And it was all those religious people became hostile. They became, uh, they hated Jesus for what he stood for. And so they crucified him. And so again, if they will crucify Jesus for showing who God is as he was God, how much also should we also expect others to hate us or be hostile towards us as we stand up for God? But he says, uh, those who are enemies of the cross, they're hostile towards the cross. He says that their way is destruction. It said who's uh, destruction, in other words, they'll, they'll be, uh, their, their lives will come to an end. It says whose God is their appetite. Uh, the Greek word there brings with it the picture of, as far as an appetite, someone who's hungry. In other words, someone who has a hollow belly, uh, whose God is their hollow belly, their, their desires, their appetites, both physical and sexual and, and mental. In other words, it's all about what they want. They feel that they're empty, and so they're going to try to fill these, this emptiness in their not only in their belly with physical food but they're going to they're going to try to fill the emptiness in their hearts and their souls with other things and other thoughts and other people and and many often do uh, try to fill their lives with with depravity things that God had no intention for people to do but they're trying to fill that God-shaped vacuum within their within their lives so again uh, their empty bellies, their hollow belly is their God. 
In Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3, uh, Paul writes, Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh. So he's saying, yeah, before we became a Christian, before we accepted Christ, before we uh, believed and confessed uh, in Jesus Christ, we too lived by the lusts of our flesh. Uh, we did what we wanted to do. And Paul, again, was a very much, his lust was after, being, uh, after knowledge about being a religious professional, being more spiritual than everybody else. Then again, Jesus met him on the, on the road to, to Emmaus, and again, he had that encounter. And and, and Paul saw his need to accept Christ, uh, to, to worship and submit and bow to Jesus Christ. He says, among them, again, Ephesians 2 verse 3 says, among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh. And now notice the three things he says, indulging in the desires of the flesh, the carnal, and then also of the mind. Indulging in the desires of the mind, and we were by nature children of wrath. So the things that we were doing, he's saying, fulfilling our flesh and fulfilling our nature, shows that we were children of wrath, shows that we had nothing to do with God and that we fully deserved God's wrath. We were children of wrath because we deserved God's wrath because of what we were thinking, what we were saying, and what we were doing. Even as the rest, he's saying, yeah, we were just like that before we came to Christ. Among them, we too all formally, and that's the way our lives were. But again, it goes back to, to the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Uh, someone who lives by the desires of the flesh and the mind can be translated. In other words, every whim and fancy. Have you ever known somebody that, that basically uh, does whatever they want? Uh, someone who goes shopping and they go out and buy whatever they want regardless of whether they have the money or not. Uh, they, they do whatever suits their wishes. They do whatever is wanted. And, and that's the problem today. We see so many parents, their children scream for toys as they stand in line or want candy in the line of the grocery store and they just want what they want when they want it and the parents give in to them rather than showing them no they don't draw lines and so we're living in a culture where again more and more individuals grow up thinking I can get what I want if I holler and scream enough if I if I call enough attention to myself if I make everybody else miserable sooner or later I'm gonna get what I want and that folks is the desires of the flesh and the mind every whim and every fancy and of course, you see people who have, you know, people who have lots of money, have, uh, you know, uh, more money than uh, basically it's whatever they want to satisfy that desire. Um, uh, so before we come to know Christ, that's what we did. It was all about what I wanted, all about what she wanted. And again, going back to what Paul is saying, we, we deserve God's wrath and punishment. Let's move on to raw, uh uh, Romans chapter 1, 26 through 28, as we continue to talk about, you know, what are the consequences of, of rejecting God and his worldview, uh, specifically that when we reject God, that we're going to face the consequences. We're going to face destruction. Uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter, 20, uh, chapter 1, verses 26 through 28, he says, For this reason, God gave them over to degrading passions. For the women exchange the natural function for that which is natural. And in the same way also the men abandoned the natural function of the woman and burned in the desire toward one another. Men with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own persons the due penalty of their error. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer, watch this next phrase, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper. Paul is telling us there reaches a point when people just go so far away from God and their actions and their thinking, uh, their lifestyles are so different than what it was created to be. God says, okay, you want that lifestyle? You can have that lifestyle. God says, I'm, gonna, I'm just giving you over. You want it, you can have it, I'm done with you. Um, the sad truth is that uh, God gives people the choice. They can go on with their, their sick uh, choices and, and live their lifestyles uh, contrary to the way God designed it. Uh, if people want to reject the light of God's truth, and God says it's fine, but you need to understand there's no more hope for you. 
And there's some people where it's just, uh, I've talked to people where it's, I call them gospel hardened. It doesn't matter. There's, there's no conscious, uh, conscience anymore. Uh, Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 6, it says, For the mind is set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the spirit is life and peace. Uh, Paul makes it very clear that if we let our minds go with a worldview of the flesh, uh, of the flesh of the world, we're choosing death over life and peace. So you want God to leave you alone? Pretty soon there reaches a point where God says, okay, you can have it, but then you're beyond hope. Uh, he, he's just going to let you go on. But rather than facing destruction and rejecting God's worldview, scriptures also tell us that God calls us to renew our mind with his truth. So what's the opposite of rejecting God's truth is that we need to renew our mind with God's truth. And we've already touched Romans chapter 12 verse 2 a couple of weeks ago, but I, I want to read it again. And Paul writes, and do not be conformed to this world. There it is. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Uh, the way that you're not, the only way that you're not going to be like the world, the only way that you're not going to be sucked in by all you hear and see and watch and, and people that you talk to uh, from the world is you've got to renew your mind. And, and again, we talked about when you renew your mind, you're trying to figure out what God wants for your life. Very simply, as you understand God's word and renew your mind with the, with the truth, then God's will is going to become very clear to you, which is very, he says, which is acceptable. It's perfect. God's will is perfect for your life. So as we renew our minds, the Holy Spirit transforms our inner person of our spirit. So you might ask, well, well Jeff, how, how can I do that? How can I renew my mind? So again, it goes back to the idea of reprogramming our minds, and we'll talk more about this later, but we have to specifically, we have to reprogram our minds with God's truth. Many ways where, uh, you know, there's programs that go in and, and search on your computer for, for malicious spyware and all the different types of uh, Trojan horses and all the bad, uh, there's just so much bad that people are trying to get into our computers to, uh, to destroy it or, or try to uh, get money or bitcoins uh, from us when they, they take control of our computers. And so you have to put in another program and you've got to go in and search the bad. But not only that, you've got to put the, back, the good back in. Sometimes they'll take little bits or, or lines out of code and, and then you have to put the good code back in so you, so you can operate correctly. Well, that's what we need to do. We have got to look and ask God with his Holy Spirit and through his word to look at the bad coding, the bad lines of, of instruction that are in our minds and replace it with the truth of God's mind, God's word. Paul writes about this in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. He says, finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lov lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there is any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, let your mind dwell on these things. Paul gives us a, a list of all these things and all these things uh, uh, specifically can be defined and located in God's word and that can be specifically applied to your life and your life situation. A lot of times it's in the Proverbs, in the Psalms, things that Jesus said. But again, we have to, we have to dwell on things, those things. We have to find them, dwell them, we have to memorize them. Uh, Paul says in Clay, uh, Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, set your mind on the things above, not on the things on earth. Uh, again, Satan wants our minds to be con confronted and conflicted and, and in a controversy over all the mess that's going on around us. And again, we talked about the physical warfare, the ideological warfare and spiritual warfare that's going on behind us. Uh, we've got to reprogram our minds with the truth if we want to go through this, understanding the things, uh, life and creation the way he did. Uh, the last thing I want to uh, call our attention to here as far as what the, the scripture tells us is that uh, the Bible tells us that a, a renewed mind brings peace. A renewed mind brings peace. When we renew our mind with God's word, 
then that's when we're going to have peace. Uh, people are looking for peace left and right. Uh, you look on the commercials and when they'll say, you're going to get this. You're, you know, I can't get no satisfaction and, uh, because you, know, you won't only get satisfaction is if you uh, buy these things or do these things. And, and the truth is, uh, true satisfaction, true peace is only going to come through God. Again, one of the famous passages Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, he says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Now, let's focus in on this verse 7. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So when we bring our prayers and requests before God with an attitude of thanksgiving, God gives our hearts and minds uh, uh, the peace. So when you see your circumstances through God's eyes, then you go, oh, okay, everything is in control. God is in control. And he gives you that peace in spite of all the circumstances. And, and as we make our way through this World War C, that's one of the things we're going to talk about is the practical peace uh, that people that we're going to pray for and, and help, uh, ask God to help people who are, who are going through this, uh, this really bad times of isolation and, and depression. And we're going to talk, we'll talk more about that later in a couple of weeks. But it, again, it goes back very clearly, a renewed mind. Uh, a mind that rejects God is going to hostile to God, is going to be anxious, is going to be worried, is going to look for other things to bring it peace like drugs and alcohol and, and uh, other things that will uh, try to dilute the pain as compared to that with going to God and allowing Him to give you peace even in the midst of the pandemic, even in the midst of COVID-19, even in the midst when it seems like the world is going crazy, God can give you that peace. So let's close with uh, some questions, uh, reviewing uh, these uh, last two or, or three weeks talking about worldview and World War C. Again, going back uh, to one of the first points is, uh, the first question again I want to ask you is, do I have mental cataracts. And I encourage you again to go back to our uh, number one, our first series, and I, I talk about that, how Jesus talks about a darkening of the mind, of the things that we allow to darken our, our mind. And each one of us have to ask ourselves, you know, do I have mental cataracts? Uh, the, the question is specifically, what non-Christian elements have I allowed to influence my thinking and beliefs? What non-biblical ideas have I incorporated into my worldview and look at it as being from God, or you know it's not from God and you don't care anyway. You're living it anyway because, again, your mind has been darkened to where you don't care about the truth, or you don't care. Your conscience is no longer bothered to the degree, and what you're doing is wrong, and so you're getting towards that, well, God gave them over, because when your conscience no longer bothers you, in other words, when the Holy Spirit, he's all, if you're a Christian and you're out of fellowship with God, he's going to be tapping you on the shoulder, and he's going to be telling you, saying, that's wrong, that's a bad attitude, that's a wrong thought, you don't need to be thinking those things, that's selfish, you need to repent, you need to change your ways, you need to confess and agree that what you're doing is wrong, and, other, and, and so that you'll do what's right, and because sin is crouching in the door, and so is your destruction. And so we have to go in, and we have to, and, it's, and it hurts to go, well, you know what, that thought about how, about these people, uh, any, those who have thoughts of racism, and thinking that one race is superior to other, that's just wrong. That is not biblical. That is not Christian. And so asking God to show if there's any racism in your heart so you might see, no, every, everyone is equal in God's eyes. The ground at, uh, at the cross is flat. You know, God died for everyone. Next question I want to ask is, uh, each of us need to ask ourselves is, do I worship at the altar of the hollow belly? Do I worship at the altar of the hollow belly? That sounds like 
uh, what was it, there's a sandwich shop about the big belly pot belly sandwiches or something like that. Uh, do I worship at the altar of the hollow belly? In other words, is, is my appetite my God? Is your appetite your God? Do you do whatever you want regardless of how it affects other people? Uh, come hell or high water, you're, you know, you're not going to wear a mask. You're, you don't care. You think it's all a hoax about this COVID-19. And so uh, it doesn't matter. My appetite, my desire is I want to be free. I have a freedom. I'm a United States citizen. I have the freedom to do what I want. And again, it's your, it's your, ho your worshiping at the hollow belly because it's your appetite of doing what you want. Again, self-centered. Are, are you self-centered? So check out that hollow belly you got it. And what is it that you're trying to do to fill that, that God-shaped vacuum or, the, or, or that desire in your heart uh, to, uh, to do whatever you want? The next question is, uh, has God abandoned you to foolish thinking? Now, by chance, uh, you're, by chance, you just happen to be watching this, and you, and you know that you've never accepted Christ. You don't believe in God. You don't believe in the Bible. Uh, you don't believe what your parents or friends have been telling you. And so uh, you, you just don't care anymore. Uh, and, you've, and you've actually not really thought about how you might have already crossed the line. Are you no longer in conflict over the bad things you do? Uh, is there no longer, you know, when you uh, say mean words to people, when you do bad things to people, when you uh, cause all sorts of conflict, and, and again, anywhere from you know, physical harm, emotional harm uh, to people, uh, verbal abuse, mental abuse, uh, but it doesn't bother you. You can do bad things and it doesn't bother you, so there's no conflict. Well, maybe you're very close to that line to where God has given you over. Uh, do you still feel something like a conscience tugging you and in, in going and doing what's right? Maybe you don't. Then maybe God has given you over and, and there is no hope for you. But if you at all feel a pull of the Holy Spirit, if you at all feel a desire that maybe what you're doing is right, then you need to stop and, and you just need to pray ask God for help. You don't know what to do, where to go, what to say. But if there's still something in your, in your heart, there's, there's still enough something in your person to where God is still hounding after you and saying, you need to come back. Yes, you've gone the wrong way. You've done the wrong thing with the wrong people. And you're trying to move in the wrong direction. But yet you still see God's uh, love for you through Jesus on the cross that he died for you and and he does not want you to spend eternity separated in the devil's hell that you don't have to go there now if you want to you can and I, somebody said yeah man I'm going to hell because that's where all my friends are we're going to have a party I don't think flesh eating fire you know flesh eating fire for eternity is going to be uh, I don't think that's going to be a whole lot of fun but not only that there's just the whole idea of hell being separated from God where there is no hope is that where you want to be, where there is no hope? You know, if not, maybe God has given you over and it's too late. Maybe it's too late. And I hope and pray it's not for you, whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever time, whatever year this might be. I hope that there's still something in there where you'll turn back to God and say, God, help me. God, help me. Uh, one of the last two questions I want to ask is, what am I doing to renew my mind with God's way of thinking? This is uh, for those who know Christ, who believe Christ, accepted Christ. What are you doing? Are you doing anything? Because you're constantly getting, uh, getting information. You put good stuff in, you're going to get good stuff out, good thoughts out. You know, you, you feed your mind with junk, and what are you going to do? You're going to be... Uh, you know, you're going to have junk. You eat greasy food, you're going to have greasy skin and greasy hair and, and a greasy life. Whereas, you know, you eat good food, you're going to have a great, you know, great complexion eventually, a uh, healthy life, healthy body. And so uh, you, we need to renew our mind. Very simply, again, God's Word, get into God's Word. Get you a translation that you can understand. Uh, you know, some of these older translations, uh, it's, they're very hard to understand, but, but God has helped us in, in interpreting the original languages. You know, New American Standard, New Living Translation, uh, the, the English Standard Version, the uh, Christian Standard Bible, there's a lot. Get into God's Word or Christian books. There's Christian, you know, make sure it's a Christian worldview. Somebody, some of the 
the, some, of the, some of the great authors and teachers and disciples or Christian music. Let your mind, the, the music, uh, grab a hold of you. That's why it's so great to hear Stephen singing, the Christian music that ministers to our minds and our souls and our spirit. The last uh, point I want to leave you with this is very simply, going, again, going back to worldview and your mind. Uh, no God, no peace. No God, no peace. Now let me spell that out. N-O, God. If there's no God in your life, there's going to be N-O. There's going to be no peace. Because you're feeling it, those, all those things are always going to come short. On the other hand, if you will know God, K-N-O-W, experience, not just head knowledge, know God, experiential knowledge. Not just hear somebody talk about it, uh, but somebody, you, you take God into yourself, you receive God, you have a personal encounter, relationship, you know God, not know about God, but you know Him personally, then you're going to be able to know peace, K-N-O-W, peace. You will experience peace, that peace that surpasses understanding. It's when your heart, as a, as a raging uh, storm, as, as there's pain and, and anguish and and all sorts of agony in your heart. But when you give that to God and you pray your heart out to God and say, God, help me in this. Uh, you got bad news from the doctor. You got cancer or a loved one has cancer. You just have a loved one die. And you've got all these problems. And, and you're, you, just, you just think, oh, God, just let me die because I'm so miserable. I can't stand this pain anymore. I can't, I can't stand all this lamenting and personal, emotional, spiritual pain. I just want to die because I don't want to experience this. Uh, pain anymore but if you'll know God if you'll ask God in your heart he can help you to know that peace it's like when Jesus comes into a raging storm he can calm that storm just as he did physically uh, in the Bible and in historically but he can do that spiritually emotionally in in your life and again it goes back to Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 through 7 he says be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication uh, with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. In other words, uh, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Don't be anxious, but pray. And as a result, if you'll pray about everything, the peace of God which surpasses all, uh, all comprehension. I can't explain to you how that happens scientifically. I can't explain that. It's beyond my understanding, it's beyond anybody's ex uh, understanding, how we in the middle of a physical experiencing, experiencing hate and turmoil and conflict and agony, how we're in the middle of it, then God can come in in our hearts and he can calm that raging storm in our hearts. It's beyond anything that we can understand. You know, and I've experienced it and many of you have experienced it. It's like, wow. Hmm, thank you for the peace. And he says, this peace, watch this, watch it. He says, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This peace will guard your heart, your emotions, your soul, your psyche. This peace will guard those emotions and bring your emotions back down into where they need to be. And what? Your mind. We need God's Spirit through His Word to give peace to our minds. Because people are so depressed, they're so anxious in this pandemic or whatever it is years from now that you're facing and you're listening to this and, and you're facing, and, but God will guard your mind. He will help you. Again, why? Because you've got the right worldview. If you've got the right set of glasses on, then you understand what's going on on this. The sometimes the bad things do happen to good people. Sometimes horrible things happen. Yes, there's death. Yes, there's disease. Yes, there's destruction. Uh, God is, is giving the devil, letting him have his reign here on earth because he's giving more time uh, to more people to have more opportunities to turn from Satan, to turn to him. Again, it's God's timing, God's perfect timing. And it's like, God, why are you letting things just run amok? Well, again, it's, it's his timing, his purposes, because he's giving people time to turn back to him. But just, again, closing, very simple. You will never have peace of mind until you're right with God 
and you have time in prayer with him. Let's pray. Father, I know that we've looked at a lot of scriptures today, very powerful scriptures, and Lord, uh, they're, they're very uncomfortable uh, when we read these scriptures and, and when we look in the mirror and, and we see that uh, we have allowed our minds to be controlled and so many puzzle pieces of, of non-Christian worldview thoughts are, are, have now invaded and implanted themselves when in our very minds, our very hearts, and our, our, very, our mind thinking of what goes on. Lord, we pray that you would help us to take this worldview issue seriously, that we would take every worldview that we see and hold it up to the light of the truth of God's Word, of your Word, and see what's right and what's not, and not right. Lord, I pray for those who uh, that do not know you, that do not believe. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit would reach out and, and touch their hearts and, and helps their hearts see that they're going in the wrong way, that there's pain and destruction and, and eternal suffering as a result of, of rejecting you and, and your love. God, help them to see that, that you've done everything you can to, to pay for their sins, that Jesus uh, died on the cross for their sin, and he, and he rose from the dead, and he's offering them eternal salvation, uh, forgiveness of sins, and offering the power of the Holy Spirit to live through this life now. And Lord, I pray for those who, who already know you, that have a relationship with you, and, and, and they've gotten off because of their worldview. They've been sucked in. Uh, to the lies. Satan has just uh, put all sorts of little lies in their life and they're willing to, to go along because they don't think anybody sees or anybody knows, but it goes back into the heart. There's no peace because they're not right with you. So Lord, we just pray for everyone who uh, is experiencing these scriptures at this point uh, now, who's watching uh, this sermon, that, or that you would help them to, to give whatever it is, that raging sea, the, the volcan volcano of fire that's erupting within their hearts, that they would give those, those pains and those crises, those, those, those horrible things that they're feeling giving to you, that you're, you'd be able to give them that peace that surpasses uh, this understanding that surpasses uh, mental understanding that you would give them that that peace that they'd be able to take that deep breath and that you would calm that raging sea within lord help us to align our worldview with what's in your word we pray these things in jesus name amen Thank you.